everyone, we've now come to the third part of this three-part series where I share some of Rob's and my favorite everyday meals. And uh, if you haven't seen the other two videos, I'll link them down below. Today will be a video with five dinners and we've already done five breakfasts and five lunches, so you'll find them in the description box. You'll also find the links to the recipes in this video in the description box. And uh, now I think we just get started. On the Monday we made roasted sweet potato with spicy beans and as always I like to show you our surroundings and what it's like where we live and it was snowing on this day as well. So to start this recipe I just wash some sweet potatoes and then I prick holes in them with a fork which is to let out some steam when they're roasting. Then I place them on a lined baking tray next to each other but with a little bit of space in between and I roast them in the oven at 220 degrees Celsius for about 40 minutes. And then to start preparing the beans, I add some water to a pan along with the onions. You could also fry them in some oil if you'd like. And then I saute them until translucent and then add some minced garlic and fry that for about a minute before adding some smoked paprika along with some um, ground cumin and some ground coriander and on top of that I sprinkle some dried oregano and give that a mix. Then I add in some black beans or you could use kidney beans or mixed beans if you like. Then I add a splash of water and give it a good mix. Then on top of that I add some chunky salsa or salsa sauce. You could use spicy or not spicy and I let it simmer a little bit and then start mashing some of the beans. So I leave about half of the beans whole and half of the beans mashed. And then I add some frozen kale or you could use frozen spinach. And I just let it thaw and wilt into the mixture. And then I add some salt and give it a mix again. You just season it to taste. And then I'm checking on my sweet potatoes to see if they're done. And if they're tender the whole way through, they're good to go. So I take them out of the oven and place them on my plates and I have made three here so that I have one left over for lunch the next day and then I just score the middle of the potato and open it up add some greens into it and also some uh, sliced red cabbage and on top of that I add my beans I like to give a generous dollop and then I also prepared some guacamole to add on top. I always like to add guacamole when I make anything Mexican inspired. It's also a good source of fats and you get some raw veggies in there as well. And then I sprinkle some chopped coriander on top of that. I know not everyone likes coriander, so leave it out if you wish. And that was Monday's dinner done. It's really simple and delicious. And on the Tuesday, we made a very green spaghetti. And to start this recipe, I just turn my hob on and add some oil to a pan. You could use water as well if you like. And then into the pan, when it's hot, I add the onions and I saute them until translucent. And while that's sauteing, I'm cooking my spaghetti or it will cook while I'm making the sauce. And when the onion is translucent, I add some garlic and I fry that off for a minute. And then I go ahead and add some frozen broccoli into the pan. But you could also use fresh broccoli, it's up to you. I give it a good shake and then I put a lid on to steam it for a minute. And while it's steaming, I'm mixing some starch with oat milk. I use arrowroot starch or you can use cornstarch. Just make sure that you get all the clumps and lumps out of the mixture. At this point the broccoli should be thawed, so I add a tablespoon of nut butter. You can use cashew or almond, it adds a nice creamy texture and flavor. And then I go ahead and add some frozen green peas into the mix and I give it a good stir. And then I also add some frozen kale again and I give that a stir as well. So I let that thaw and wilt and cook into the sauce. And here I'm just draining my pasta before going back to finishing off the sauce. So I add some salt and then I go ahead and add some nutritional yeast as well. It's a great flavor boost for this sauce. And then I add some cracked black pepper and give it a mix and that's the sauce done. So I serve up my spaghetti in bowls and then I dollop the sauce onto the spaghetti. If you wanted the sauce looser, you could add more um, 
oat milk to it. And then I go ahead and sprinkle some dried herb and pepper mixture onto the plates, but you could leave this out if you like. And I also like to sprinkle some sliced spring onion and that's the pasta done. On the Wednesday we made hummus bowls with lots of roasted vegetables and as you know from the lunch video I like to make a lot of roasted vegetables to keep some for lunch the next day. So I just popped the oven on 220 degrees celsius and then I place the vegetables on a tray and add some oil and salt and pepper. Here I've got carrot, parsnips and beetroot cut into similar sized chunks so that they will roast evenly. I just give it all a mix with my hands to make sure everything is evenly coated and then I place it in the oven for about 35 minutes. While that's roasting at the beginning, I'm preparing some cauliflower as well. So I place the florets on a lined baking tray and then again I add some oil. You could do this also without oil if you prefer. I'm using rapeseed oil which is rich in omega-3. And then I sprinkle with some salt and some black pepper again. And for this cauliflower I like to add some Ras Halanut, which is a Middle Eastern spice blend. And then I give it all a mix to coat again and place it in the oven with the other vegetables. The cauliflower takes a little bit of less time, so it's good to do it in this order. Then to assemble the plates, I add some hummus onto the bowls and I spread it out. I have hummus recipes on my blog, so I'll link them in the description. And then I add some cooked grains to the bowl. I have a mix here, but you can use any grains you like. And it's great to have leftovers of that as well to use in different meals. Then I plate up my roasted vegetables. On top of that, add some sliced spring onion again, but you could use raw red onion maybe, chopped finely. And then I also sprinkle on some pumpkin seeds. Mine are raw, but you could also toast them if you wish. And those are the hummus bowls. Perfect winter meal if you ask me. Then on the Thursday we made some colorful Buddha bowls with marinated and baked tempeh. And to start this dish I just add some broccoli florets onto a baking tray. And again I'm adding some oil but you could skip it if you like. And then I crack some black pepper over that and add some salt and give it a good mix as always to make sure it's evenly coated. And then I push the broccoli over to one side of the tray and I'm adding some sliced tempeh to the baking tray. This tempeh has been marinated in a soya mixture. I'll leave the links in the description so that you can find the recipe for that as well. And it's just been marinating in the fridge overnight. And then I go ahead and start assembling the bowls. So I start by adding some rice into the mix. And it's cooked brown rice that I'm using, but you could use any grain you like. And then I go ahead and add some mixed green baby leaves, but you could use lettuce or kale or whatever you like. On top of that, I'm adding some sliced red cabbage, which I've massaged with some lemon and salt. And then I'm adding some fermented kimchi carrots, which I have a recipe for on the blog, but you could use any fermented vegetables you like, maybe sauerkraut or kimchi. And then I'm just adding my roasted goodies onto the bowl, so the broccoli and the baked tempeh. And then I go ahead and slice an avocado in half, and I scoop out a half avocado for each bowl. I think it looks really pretty when you put the half avocado onto the plate and then I put some sesame seeds on top of that. But of course you could slice or cube the avocado if you wish. Then I'm adding some of my now famous <laughs> pickled red onions. I'm very glad to see you guys making these. Thanks for sharing that with me. And those are the Buddha bowls done. I just like to drizzle some peanut sauce on top. And again, I'll leave a link for the full recipes in the description box. So on Friday, we made some red lentil and carrot dal. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I make this. It's one of my favorite dishes. And I just start by adding some oil to a pan Again, you could add some water, it doesn't really matter. Then I go ahead and add some onions into the pot and I'm mixing red and white. And then I saute them until translucent and again adding garlic onto that. I sauteed that for a minute and then I add some cubed carrots. 
and on top of that I sprinkle some salt because it helps release the natural juices of the vegetables. And then I steam them under a lid for a couple of minutes and then I add some curry powder, about a tablespoon of mixed masala and then a teaspoon of garam masala and I also like to add some black mustard seeds but they are optional. I give this a mix to let the spices get in there and then I rinse some red lentils which is the base of the dal. And red lentils are a great source of plant-based protein and fiber as well. So then I just shake the rest of the water out and I add them to the pot along with some water. I add equal amounts lentils and water and then I also add in some chopped tomatoes. I add one carton or one can and then I also add some coconut milk. I use full fat but you can use whatever you like and I stir the coconut milk in with the other ingredients and when it comes to a boil I cover it with a lid and let it simmer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes I take off the lid and I add some frozen kale again or you could use frozen spinach or you could even use fresh kale or spinach and then I season with salt and pepper to taste and give it a good mix and serve it up. Dal is a great winter dish, it's hearty, it's warming, the spices especially make it really warming and lovely and you can add almost any vegetables to it you like and it comes out delicious. So I just serve it up in bowls and then I top it off with some, you guessed it, pickled red onions and then I also sprinkle on some salted peanuts but you could use any salted nuts and some sliced uh, spring onions and that's it that was five days of vegan meals I hope you enjoyed watching me make them and thanks so much for watching the series while this is the last episode of this series I'll be posting new videos every week so stay tuned take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one